Hello from San Francisco. It's misty here and foggy and I'm sick, but I'm ready to discuss the latest interview with Richard Sutton, Dwarkesh Patel. They speak two different languages, old and new, and we need to understand if we understand what each of them mean. Let's go. So Richard Sutton comes from an old school of AI. He quotes Alan Turing and John McCarthy, the man who first framed such questions as can machines think? What is intelligence? How do machines learn? And Sutton is famous for being one of the inventors of reinforcement learning, and he just won the 2024 Turing Award for his role in inventing reinforcement learning. It's his, like Nobel Prize. And suddenly his conversation with podcaster Borkash Patel set internet and especially Twitter on fire. Why? What happened? Why there were so many misunderstandings? Why there were so many posts arguing with each other? I think it's just because these two people spoke very different languages and on very different level of understanding and level of abstraction. First word that shaped the whole conversation was prediction. Sutton's prediction means if I act in the world, what happens next? When you predict what will happen, you predict and then you see what happens. There is ground truth, he says. You touch fire, you get burned, you move a chess piece, face the consequences. Prediction is tied to surprise and this surprise changes you and how you act. Prediction that Dwarkash has in mind is very different. What is the next word? That's his prediction. So this is LLM's predicting text, which often looks like reasoning and sometimes even like planning, but it just token after token. There is no actual prediction in the sense that the model or as Richard prefers to call it, network, the network, the neural network, cannot predict what you as a human will do after the network gave you this token after token reply. And there is no prediction here, argues Richard said. So they both use this prediction, but it's a completely different meaning. And that single mismatch set kind of the mood for the whole conversation. And then there were goals. So goals, simple word you might think, but it really was a next structure. For Sutton, having a goal is the essence of intelligence. He quoted McCarthy that intelligence is the computational part of the ability to achieve goals. So for him, goal means sign for intelligence. And Dwarkash says, no, LLMs have goals too, next token prediction. But that's not a goal, says Richard Sutton. It doesn't change the world. You can't look at the system and say it has a goal if it's just sitting there predicting. So when Sutton says goal, he means a real world outcome. When Dwarkash says goal, he means an internal training objective. Very different. Then the big discussion on the internet was about imitation. Again, they use this word imitation. And Dwarkesh says, kids will initially learn from imitation. They repeat the words, the actions, and that's how they got their cultural skills. That's how they used to learn how to hunt, how to propagate seeds and all that stuff. He immediately argues that it's of course not true because he sees an exploration. He sees that in this imitation there is always a goal. Kids do not just imitate. They have a goal. Why do they say this word? Why do they do these things? Do they test the boundaries? Do they want milk? So they have a goal and that's why they imitate. It's not just, you know, mindless and goalless repetition of stuff or things. I would attest to that as a parent. Kids certainly have a goal why they do all these things all over again, time after time, repeating. It's not just for imitation, it's to achieve a goal. It's an important difference. There was much more of that they used world model differently and here's actually a big important moment because when you listen to Richard Sutton he understands the terms he's been using them he's been inventing them for many many years when Dwarkash uses terms he juggles them 
without full precision, without complete understanding what they mean. He said, for example, that LLMs are the best world models we've made to date in AI. And it's just not true because a world model, again, would enable you to predict what would happen after something that model T. And it might happen in simulation, but it's a controlled environment. We don't have LLMs as world models. There were more, but there was also a very funny moment about AGI and how different the thinking process is and how smart and present Richard Sutton is just following what words Dwarkesh Patel throws at him. Well, how did we get to this AGI? You want to presume that it's been done. So suppose it started with general math and methods, but now we've got the AGI. And now we want to go... Then we're smarter. done. Hmm? We're done. Interesting. You don't think that there's any, anything above AGI? Well, but you're using it to get AGI again. Well, I'm using it to get superhuman levels of intelligence or competence at different tasks. So these AGIs, if they're not superhuman already, then they, the, the knowledge that they might impart would be not superhuman. I guess there's different gradations of human. I'm not sure this this so, your, your, your idea makes sense because because no. it seems to presume the existence of AGI, uh, and then that we've already worked that out. If Dwarkesh thinking about AGI doesn't make sense for Richard, then what does? Richard Sutton summarizes intelligence in four parts. It's policy in the situation I'm in. What should I do? It's value function in number from TD learning. How well is it going? It's perception. The state, your sense of where you are, and then transition model of the world. If you do this, what will happen? Your physics of the world. And notice how the world model here is explicitly a model of consequences and not a giant text prior. Because as I said, he even asked not to use the word model when Dwarkesh spoke about models, LLMs, because he said these are networks artificial neural networks. Details, but still. The whole thing he calls, Richard Sutton calls, the experiential paradigm, which means based on experience. Did he say that LLMs are dead end, as it was in the title? Not exactly. He said that it's surprising how effective artificial neural networks are at language tasks. There was a surprise, it was unexpected, but he added that, yet I expect there to be systems that can learn from experience, which could perform much better and be much more scalable. In which case, it will be another instance of the bitter lesson that the things that used human knowledge were eventually superseded by things that just trained from experience and computation. And this is the axis where he says LLMs do not see. What's interesting is that it's absolutely inevitable for Richard Sutton that AI will succeed. And here I would like to stop for a second and say that for some people he might sound too harsh about LLMs, but from what I hear, he doesn't yet know what exactly will happen and how we will do it. So I think LLMs can be at ease for now. We're not going to cancel them yet. They still should go as up. Development. These are his four steps why AI succession is inevitable. No unified human governance. We will figure out intelligence. We will reach superintelligence. And the most intelligent entities will gain power. Succession, he says, to digital intelligence or augmented humans is inevitable. And it should be based on experience. It was actually very nice and refreshing to hear at Dwarkesh Patel these exact words that succession to digital intelligence or augmented humans is inevitable. This is the understanding of how AI will augment us, which I'm a true believer in. So where did this discussion land? Basically the same place where they began. Dwarkesh thinks they already LLMs are good priors, and if they can get gold at IMO, maybe they are the right scaffolding. But Richard says... It's surprising. Yeah, you can have such a different point of view. And then he says... Don't be difficult. I mean, this is obvious. <laughs> and at this moment, you see that they are on such a different level of understanding, of the level of detailization how it's built, that the conversation sounds like a debate when it's really two languages of intelligence 
talking past each other. And that's why this interview lit up the internet, because in it you can hear the old and the new AI not fighting, but failing to translate. And the funny thing is that young people cling so tightly to the bitter lesson article that Richard Sutton wrote, while he himself, the author, says. The bitter lesson, oh, who cares about that? That's <laughs> that's an empirical observation about a particular period in history. 70 years in history no longer doesn't necessarily have to apply to the next 70 years. Thank you for being with Attention Span. Leave your comments, subscribe, and see you next week.